Hello multi Mighty Malt Merrymakers and thank you to Mike Addison Sape for that malt mention. Welcome to the Bothy, I'm Ralphie, I'm talking whiskey and this is Ralphie Review 913 Extras. Extras means that I'm giving additional information to whiskey drinkers and other quality spirit drinkers which is not specifically referencing a single whiskey, rum, bourbon or whatever review of a specific bottle but is more generalised and is simply me sharing experience to help you to gain your experience that much much faster so that when you go out to buy whiskey, rum, bourbon, rye, cognac, whatever you get better value for money. Simple as that. And um, this particular subject I'm going to cover in a wee bit more detail about keeping whiskey long term because it's not that long ago where someone would open a bottle of whiskey and it would be finished within one night, one week, one month uh, and maybe someone who only brought out a whiskey for visitors and special occasions would keep a bottle a couple of years and those that got a wee drop from that bottle would comment on how marvellous it was for the simple reason that it had been left alone not shaken, not battered about, stored away from sunlight in a cocktail cabinet or dark cupboard somewhere possibly even in the kitchen uh, it was ignored and um, so the oxidi oxidization of the whiskey was happening at a slow and measured pace particularly when there was still a decent amount of spirit in the bottle but um, eventually it would just flatten off I mean I've had whiskies in bars which have been under bright spotlights and I've just been curious it's not happened very often I might add but there's been a few wee drops left in a bottle of single malt that's been sitting there for several years so I bought a wee dram and I have to say it had oxidised out completely so what happens is eventually the, the flavour and the taste the flavour, the smell, the flavour and the taste once you've got the spirit in the glass starts to show signs of diminishing fading, turning ghost-like um, losing its potency and just tasting, tasting a little two-dimensional and flat a little bit malty without much complexity despite the fact that the alcoholic strength is still intact now I know I hear you you may be saying hey Ralphie how do you know that the bar's not sort of just topped up these wee empty bottles with some half blend half single malt um, well you're right um, many whiskey drinkers couldn't tell can't tell um, when I was working in a, a bar briefly um, it was known that one of the other barmen was uh, cutting the blended whiskey uh, to make up margin uh, but it wasn't happening to the malts they never touched the malts because they knew that malt drinkers would spot it even if they didn't but that was the kind of culture in the old days now you've got people who will open a bottle and say this is a particularly interesting version of this for the year in which it was bottled and the decade in which it was produced I want to keep this in my library I'm not going to op finish the bottle I'm going to have rather than open one bottle and drink it all till it's finished and then open another bottle it's a regular situation malt mates where people have had fif have 15, 20 up to even 50 bottles of whiskey and other quality spirits open at the one time and are just going slowly through the different bottles depending on how the mood takes them I've done it myself I still do it myself um, and it's great because you're constantly getting your palate challenged by the diversity of signature styles smells tastes profiles forms and sensations that single malts can deliver the whole cavalcade of experience of smell and taste is second to none it really is there's nothing else comes close bourbon's great but there's far less diversity of flavor in bourbon than there is in scotch and nobody's going to quibble with that so there's a number of options to keeping your bottle once you've opened it 
Here's a, here's a bottle of um, Glenlivet that I opened last year. So it's down at a fill level now that tells me that I don't, I could get away with a few months, but a few years, it's not going to happen. So there's a number of options available to me. One, I can get hold of a smaller bottle right, and decant it into it, or a smaller bottle yet, or a smaller bottle yet. Because we collect bottles, we're bottle collectors, all shapes and sizes. And we can decant what's in there into these other bottles when they're empty and rinsed. And we're removing the oxygen volume that's going to slow down significantly the oxidisation of that malt. Something else we can do, if I remove these out of the way, is get one of these wine saver little hand pumps and suck the air out of it. But I can tell you right now, they don't work. They are a very, very, very temporary solution. So, as you can see, the cork snapped in this. Never mind. Something else you can do is get something like Private Preserva, an inert gas that contains nitrogen, carbon dioxide and argon. Argon, I believe, is the heaviest. And you can buy this on eBay and Amazon. And you simply, it's like an aerosol, a very soft pressure aerosol. You just pop the, put the little, like, just like a WD-40 sprayer, you've got the little plastic pipe, pop it in the bottle, couple of squishes, put the cork on, and the inert gas settles down, displacing the oxygen in the, the gas in there, in the air in there, um, meaning it isn't in contact with the whiskey. I find from experience this really works. There is a debate that somehow the inert gas can change the flavour of the whiskey, but that is not my experience so far. I've kept a bottle of Laphroaig, 10 year old, for over 12 years, um, completely intact, using neutral gas. This is used quite often uh, by sommeliers, people in the wine business, someone in a restaurant for example, or in, in their own home, buys an expensive bottle of wine. <coughs> it tends to oxidise very quickly once it's opened. So they only have one glass because it's precious stuff in a small glass because it's a real tonic. This is a very good way of preserving the wine. Another way is granite granules. Seriously, I don't have them, I don't use them, but if you want to get that little bit of minerality into your bottle of whiskey, you can put washed sand in, or washed granite gravel, or whatever you want. Marble, you suppose you could use that as well. You could even use um, glass marbles. If you've got a wide enough bottleneck, pop them easy, easy and cheap to buy. And of course, they look fascinating sitting there in your bottle of whiskey. Another option which I use more and more frequently is, because I very rarely finish a whiskey, very rarely these days, I'll take a, say a Glenlivet Illicit Still, which is filled up to there, an independent bottle of Glenlivet. They're both Glenlivet, it remains a single malt, and from the smaller bottle, I'll top up into the higher fill level bottle. So that fill level is now up to there. It's the same as if it was new. And the rest, the remainder of this, I can just pop into a small bottle and mark it. When you're buying small bottles, glass bottles, which are easy to source online, get ones with the wide tops. Make sure it's metal screw tops or corks. And if it's wider on top, there's less chance of stuff spilling when you decant into it. Very easy to recycle and reuse. So I now have literally that left in the bottle, which, hey, I'll just polish off tonight. Then I'll have an empty bottle, which is fine. It'll go in the empty bottle shelf. If it's a real standard bottling, I'll just put it out in the recycling bin. But 
often I keep some of the more exotic labels and more enjoyable whiskies. I just keep the empty bottles in a wine rack. Uh, and I'm a bit of a hoarder. It's just the way it goes. So th these are techniques to help keep your whiskey not just a few months or a few years. But see this now, this Glenlivet, uh, I can mark on it literally right on the label plus about 20 centilitres, 25 centilitres of Sig Livet. Oh seven. Let's mark it on the label. Or alternatively, you can actually get light luggage labels and bits of string and tag them for presentation. I hope you find this useful. Um, I'm briefly going to mention a subject for a future um, extras. And that is, how long can we keep whiskey in our library? And by library, I'm not talking about book library. I'm talking about the fact that as time goes on, as people explore infinity bottles, for example, like I have here. This is my one goes back about 11 years, I think, about now. As people are much slower to drink whiskey because it's the, it's the new cultural norm. People don't want to be getting drunk and then cancelled out in social media. Uh, and people, a lot more people, particularly younger generation, don't want to be getting obviously drunk. They don't mind being a bit tipsy, but clearly not obviously drunk because it has impact on your health. Simple as. But uh, I'll be talking about the reason why we would actually have and develop our own archive of whiskey rather than drinking one whiskey after another because it means that there comes a point that when we go to our archive, we're going back in time and we're going on a history tour in smell and taste. And that's a very unique situation which nobody's ever thought about in the past. Apart from the forward, far-sighted distilleries that actually kept bottles of their own product as archive references. And it would surprise you the amount of distilleries that don't. I'm Rafi, done for the moment. You're wonderful, you're beautiful, you're totally malt mates. I'm Rafi. In the bothy. Have a lovely, lovely day. Bye-bye.